playing at the time, possibly on a scooter. And do you have any information about what is this about? What, what is going on here? Um, we're just hearing about neighborhood beefs and things like that. Do you think that's what's behind it? Well, all potential uh, issues are on the table. We don't know. And that's where we're asking the community's help with. What is this issue about? Uh, what led to this young lady's uh, death? Her unfortunate, untimely death. Uh, there is that video that you mentioned, but the video that we will release will show the actual vehicle uh, involved and shots being fired from that vehicle. You can actually see the muzzle flashes uh, coming from that vehicle. So we're asking, again, as the mayor mentioned, that everyone post that video far and wide. This should be the whole, that, that car should not be able to be in the DMV area anywhere and not be noticed. Someone in the community has seen that car operating yesterday, perhaps today, and I'm asking justice for Naya. Let's find that car and let's find the individuals responsible. Next question. Justin Hinton with, oh, sorry, Justin Hinton with Channel 7. Um, Mayor, two things that I wanted to, to bring up. Talking to a lot of folks in the community, we've seen so much violence as of recent weeks. Um, a lot of people are saying, you know, folks need more jobs. People need to have activities during the summertime. More rec centers need to be open. Uh, can you address that in giving people things to do during this time? And also, just it seems every summer, you know, the, the, there's a child that dies because of gun violence. Can you, can you address that as well? Um, in terms of uh, activities, uh, we, we agree, and that's why D.C. is open. Uh, that's why we have 13,000 people in summer jobs. Uh, that's why all of our pools are open. Um, that's why our young people are going to camp in person. So all that's true. All that's true. Um, I'm, I'm not convinced that that person who went through that intersection popping off indiscriminately was going to be at a rec center. I'm just not convinced of that. Okay, that's a killer. Absolutely. That's a killer. I'm not convinced of that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to do all recs, I'm going to do program, I'm going to do all of that. But I'm not convinced that that person would have been in a rec center. Now, I am convinced that some of our other programs who are working with people who are known killers can get them in and offer them a different opportunity. But that's a killer. Now, killers can be redeemed, but Naya will not be coming back. Let's find the killer. Yes. I mean, can, sir, can I? Yes, go ahead. And then I'm a, any other press questions, I'm going to come to that. Then we're going to. Yes, sir. Please identify yourself. Yeah, this is Reverend Anthony Motley, Ward 8. Yes, I Reverend Motley. Hear, I'd like to hear from my commission, my council member, because he, 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 he knows. I'm sorry, council member. I didn't know you people. were here. I want to hear from my council I'm member. sorry. I didn't rec realize your council member was here. Council member White. Oh, thank you. Um, you can imagine um, that my heart and the community heart is troubled. Um, and th then when I heard uh, the incident, when it occurred, all I could think about was Micaiah, Wilson, um, Devon, uh, the one-year-old baby Mello, and um, and I think about that we had a, a press conference here probably, what, about five months ago, trying to push that we declare a state of emergency because we foresaw this coming. Um, for those who look at the numbers, you know that last year we had 198 uh, homicides, but we don't talk about the 922 people that were shot last year. Um, and so we're on track to surpass that number this year. And I always say that bad things happen when good people do nothing, but as, as we keep seeing our babies, man, Innocent kids getting shot. That's not that's not what men do. And I think about when they bit that corner. You had to see that little girl, man. There's no way you bend the corner. You look over there and you don't see. It wasn't just one kid out there. It was more than one child out there. And somehow in that person's mind, they didn't care. And almost ten times out of ten, that person looks like you, talks like you, come from the same economic background as you and live in the same community. And so we become sick and tired of seeing our babies and our women and our kids and our families in this situation over and over again and rise up. Because I hear people talking about the mayor, the council member, uh, the police department, this is all of our problem. And the moment we forget that, we'll be here again and again and again and again until it's one of us. 
And that's a sad reality. I grew up in this community. We talk about the recreation centers or, or the activities. I've seen the decrease in the, in the recreation centers and activities in this community in the last 15 years. I grew up at number 11 Boys and Girls Club right here across the street. Closed. Heart wreck, closed. Blue wreck, closed. Anacostia wreck, closed. Catching wreck, closed. Savoy wreck, closed. All wreck, closed. And so we are building new rec races. We're building one around the corner. We're building full new recreation centers here in Ward 8. But we're playing catch up at the expense of people's lives. And I don't want to get on my soapbox because this is, for those who know me, I've been involved on, as you know, Reverend Molly, you one got me in this work when I was 17 years old. And I buried 212 people in this work at 37. And so we, we got to keep at it, man. I, I send my condolences to the, to the family. But if we don't start doing something drastic right now, like we, we put a lot of resources and time uh, into the COVID pandemic. We're in a pandemic right now when it comes to this crime in this community. And we got to start acting like it. And it's all right sometimes when it's just black people. I'm going to say that. It's just the norm. We had, over, we had over 13 shootings on MLK and Malcolm X in the last two years. Over 13. We had a homicide the day before that in the same exact location. Three weeks ago, we had another homicide on Mellon in the same location. So this, this ain't nothing new. So we got the resources because of the six-year-old, and we should, but this ain't nothing new for us, man. It's been going on far too long. And it's on us to save us. Nobody coming to save us but us. residents of this community and so much so that there are police officers that are planted at several intersections all day every day so I thought it was a bit unusual to hear that the police heard shots but didn't see shots um, and so what is the strategy or what has been the strategy for that intersection over the past I don't know what period of time and then secondly I would like to say that as a resident of this community as a business owner of this community and as a mother the Washington former pledge is five thousand dollars to add to that. Um, Thank that, you. That donation. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to respond to your your question about the police officers, the police officers were 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 ri literally right there within feet of this occurring. It's sad to say that that that's what happened, but I think when I say that. That should tell you the brazenness of the individuals that we're involved with, with here. As the mayor mentioned, yeah, we can open up all the rec centers and all that, but when you're talking about dealing with killers, they don't care if it's the police, the National Guard, or whoever it is out there. Certainly we know that they don't care, or they didn't care, that Naya was out there. We know that. We know that. So I think that in order for us to make sure that our communities are safe, and this thing does not happen over and over and over again. We got to make sure that we are getting the right guns out of the wrong hands of people who should not have them in our community. I guarantee you when we find who did this, they're no stranger to our system, as the council member said. They look like us, they talk like us, they right here from our communities. What do we do with that? What do we do with the individuals when we do find them? How do we hold those individuals accountable? What does that look like? I can put line up MLK with police officers. And if we still got people willing to use a firearm in our community, I say that the entire community needs to be together to ensure that that individual is held accountable. I'm not talking about, oh, he didn't have a fire. None of that stuff, right? Oh, he doesn't have a job. No, he's a killer. That's what he do. That's what he do. And if that's what he do, then we need, we need to treat killers accordingly. Like killers. Like killers. Thank you. And until we start doing that, until we start doing that, other people continue to do it. So as the mayor said, her charge to me, catch them. The, the quickest way to prevent the next homicide from happening is to catch them when they commit it. So, Ms. Barnes, thank you so much for your donation. I appreciate that. I will certainly, I'm, and everyone is here is hearing that. And for anyone else who is willing to get on board for justice for Naya, we're taking any and everybody, whoever is going to step up, and, and more so than just financially. I need calls. People say, oh, we pray. I'm praying for the family too, but I need calls. I need tips. 
I need you to say, this is where that car is, chief. This is what the beef is about, chief. This is who did it, chief. Send me a smoke signal. It really doesn't matter. Just call and let us know what's going on up here. Because see, the next time, it could be somebody, it could be my mama or my sister. See, or it could be me. But see, that's, that's when folk want to get involved, when it, when it touches somebody close to you. It's too late then. We got work to do. And right now, I've been working through on this. All, everybody up here been working all through the night. And I'm going to continue working on this until we bring justice for Naya. Next question. Yes? So the police officers were there. They were in the block. And I think what initially happened, again, this is the very preliminary stages of the investigation. There were calls. People were thinking there were fireworks. Clearly, there was a shooting that happened. The officer stepped out of the car 34 seconds, we know that, after the first shot happened. After the first shot happened. So while they see what's going on, at that point, you have a car, and you'll see in the video, the car went through the intersection. I don't think anybody knew where the shots were coming from at that time. All we know is that people were scattering. So this video helps to kind of paint that picture, helps to bring it together. And what I'm asking again is that we all take a look at the video, look at the car. Let's focus on finding the car and the individuals who were operating that vehicle. Next question. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Sierra Fox, Fox 5 DC reporter. Have you all recently spoken to Naya Corny's family directly? If so, how are they handling this and what would they like to share? We are dealing with the family uh, right now, and I'll, I'll reserve the comments for the family for the family. Uh, again, our thoughts and prayers are with them. Uh, this is a very tragic situation. It's a very, very tragic situation. And, uh, and again, I, I will leave that, uh, leave that to the family. They're heartbroken, obviously. Yes. Hey, Chief. Yeah, yes, Jess Arnold here with uh, Channel 9. Um, I've been hearing that it might have been Naya's mother as well, who was one of those injured victims. Can you talk about whether or not you can confirm that and any other relations? Yeah, I can't confirm that because all other people, all other victims are witnesses at this time. Uh, but I'm sure that there's a lot of information uh, in the community around this. Uh, we know it's tragic. We know that. And this is a very tragic situation. All right, last question. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Just wanted to follow up with the question I'd already asked about the, if she was on the scooter. Say it again. I had already asked the question. You didn't answer. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go to the committee. This will be the last then request. We'll move to. Was a, um, I was just confirming whether that was, she had been on the scooter, and then um, the other thing. I'm is, not for certain, Darcy, okay. if she was actually the one on the scooter. As the council member mentioned, there were a lot of kids out there. Okay, I know thank that. You. Yeah. And then yeah. Was this a drive-by, or did the person get out? There was a drive-by. Yes. Next question, right here, sir. You. Yes. Yes. My name is uh, Salim Adolfo. I'm the chair of ANCHC. Uh, many, myself, along with many of the residents in here, are protesting the renewal of the liquor license of Mart Liquor. And per the mayor's health equity report, it said that communities that are segregated with low economic development and high alcohol density are major outlets for violence. And so just like the council member said, there's been, 13, there's been more than 13 shootings, and there's been three within the last week. We're protesting this license. Can we have this store license removed? From what I understand, the chief of police can designate a store, a, a liquor license that is the detriment to the community. Many of the residents in here have already signed the petition. We have a protest hearing coming up. We need the support from the administration to say, we got seven liquor stores in close proximity to schools in this community. They need to be shut down. So Chief, we know let that, me answer We know that question, drugs are being sold inside they're being sold inside. Commissioner, of this I'm, I'm happy to hear that the community is taking a stand in the protest process. The first, quite one of the questions I asked in my briefing with my team were which establishments were involved? Have they been cooperative? Where did this incident start inside? All of these things helped the chief in his determination, and it will help me in um, if this is an ongoing protest, how I can get involved. Um, so we know that uh, the establishments that are a nuisance, and as I understand it, at least one of the three in this block are already the subject of a, of a um, I don't know what to call it, a, a, an ongoing uh, investigation, for lack of a, the proper word, into, into their dealings in how they're contributing to a nuisance property. So you have my commitment to look at any of the protests, all three, and see what we can do with those businesses. 
just what I said. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you something without having read uh, what the protest is and without the police investigation. I need to know the nature of the complaints and what's happening. and authority is that you have many residents that would go on a record to say something but don't out of fear of safety. So all of the documentation may not be there to say, okay, Abra has all these complaints. So I would just ask you to keep that in mind. I got it. I got it. All right. We are, um, and before I take any more community questions, I want to, to be clear because I, I've, I've said that we need the community to help. Um, that includes people who know that there are guns in their house um, and somebody in your house needs some help. All right, so I need you to reach out to our Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. Dale McFadden is with me here. Uh, and we need to connect um, your loved one with help, all right, before they end up using a gun or, God forbid, something happens in your own home where that gun is. So please reach out. Um, for the the resources that are available. Okay, we're going to take a few more questions. Yes, my, my name is Kwasi Seitu. I'm the ANC okay. Commissioner for CO, uh, yeah. for HCO1. And my issue is that if the police were there on the scene, and they usually are over there at, at uh, uh, Popeye's, which is like a substation, <laughs> you know, uh, and then they're sitting over at the gas station, and you see these people running through the intersection, and you see these people gathering on the corners, no enforcement, waiting for trouble to happen. Now, you got six survivors of this. They know who was who did what. They know what it's about. Let's not play stupid here. We need to dig into it. We need to hold ourselves accountable. This is our community, our community. This is not a hood. It's a neighborhood. It's a community. We don't need hoods. We don't need killers. I'm not trying to save killers. I want to get rid of them. And I would appreciate if the city would focus in on that. Just like what he was asking about that license, we need that liquor store to go. Yeah. It's yeah. got to go. Yeah. That liquor store, or that whole block needs to go. That whole block needs to go. And we need the city to back us on that. Our commission is, behind, is, 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 is in favor of changing that entire block. We need the city to be behind us. Thank you. Okay. You have the last question. Okay, go ahead. The community uh, did uh, bring this to the commission about the uh, liquor store. Okay. About what happens up there, right? Okay. Um, so we have six, seven liquor stores where you could buy liquor in one block, right? I'm sure you don't have that in your neighborhood, right? Yeah, um, well. I don't know anywhere, anywhere in the world where that, where that can be allowed. How many liquor stores, places where people could buy liquor are allowed in one block? I don't know the regulations off the top of my head, but the process that the commissioner outlined is one that we need to focus on now given that this, uh, there are establishments that exist. Um, and let's, let's be clear, they exist because people support them. So they probably, I don't know what else they sell, but they probably sell other foot drugs. Okay, that's not, I got, I got it. I got it. Who said that? Yeah, I'd like to know who said that. No, who said it? Who said that? Okay, who said that? Okay. I'd like to I'd like to give us some kind of pipeline. Yeah. Some way that we can move directly to Well your commander is right here. And we'll have you we'll have you talk to him, but Well, let, can, I, can I just, let me answer, let me answer your question, okay, because I've, I've heard it a couple of different ways. 
Um, and we have to be able uh, to say that I think that the commissioner said that people are standing on the corner. Yeah. All right. There's no law against standing on the corner. Trespassing, okay. I, the business owner can, but they haven't. They haven't. Okay, I got it. I got it. So we have, I got it. For blocking, okay. And then, all right. I got it. Nobody gets arrested for incommoding. Okay. You arrest anybody for incommoding lately? Because it would, it would, yeah. Um, you know, because because you don't have that in your neighborhood, what advice would you give our community to get rid of uh, having that many places to buy liquor in our community? Um, and I have, uh, over the course of all of my neighborhood activity, have done a lot with liquor licenses and have done a lot with liquor selling establishments that weren't good in the community. And I could give you a whole long list of the ones I've worked on, including shutting down a tiger market in Riggs Park, including uh, um, prohibiting single sales of alcohol all up and down Georgia Avenue, including limiting the sales of alcohol in grocery stores that were proliferating all over the district, but not in Ward 4 where I was the council member. So it's a lot of different, I've had a lot of history with dealing with alcohol sales in businesses that don't mean good for the community and how to shut them down systematically uh, and get the types of businesses in there that we want. Now, we don't want bad businesses. We also don't want vacant businesses. Uh, we want businesses that are going to be dealing uh, and selling the goods that you want, providing the services that you want, and all of those things. So I'm, I'm happy to engage uh, in that strategy. But let, let, us, let us remember, let us remember that we need your help today. Thank you. All right. And I, I'll stick around for some additional questions, but let's, let's close the formal part of our discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll address them. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.